Hello guys, this is me Dr. JK and today we will discuss about odontogenic cyst. This is the list of odontogenic developmental cysts. It is a big, you know, a uh, large list. We will discuss dentigerous cyst and keratocyst in this uh, session and uh, then uh, later on we will do other cysts, okay? But now we will do dentigerous cyst and odontogenic keratocyst. So, uh, today we will discuss about odontogenic keratocyst. It is a developmental cyst and uh, specific histopathologic features and clinical behavior. It has, you know, specific histopathological and clinical uh, features. It arises from the dental lamina and it is different from that of the dentigerous and radicular cyst. The dentigerous and radicular cyst, they enlarge as a result of increased osmotic pressure within the lumen of the cyst but this is not true for keratocyst and the keratocyst they will enlarge by means of some factors inherent in the epithelium itself or enzymatic activity in the fibrous wall as we have mentioned in our previous lecture that the uh, enzymes present in the capsule of the cyst they were you know prostaglandin E2, E3 and leukotrienes were there and maybe due to uh, that reason the, those enzymes are the reason for the expansion of the odontogenic keratocyst and those enzymes will lead to the resorption of surrounding bone. In WHO classification of odontogenic tumors, these lesions have been given the name keratocystic odontogenic tumor. You know, this is uh, on the basis of certain molecular genetic alterations, but they were not examined on other cystic lesions and that is why there is a confusion uh, between professional community because uh, th we cannot say that this is specific to the odontogenic keratocyst because these these were not examined on other cystic lesions that is why they have you know placed back the uh, odontogenic keratocyst in the cystic uh, you know category as compared to that of the tumors okay the term primordial cyst have been dropped as well in in previous classification they have uh, you know uh, they have uh, presented the odontogenic keratocyst alongside the primordial cyst but now they have classified both entity as different entities okay uh, there will be you know these uh, odontogenic keratocysts they comprise the uh, 3% to 11% of all odontogenic cysts now we'll discuss about the clinical features uh, it can be found in infancy to the old age and 60% of the cases will be found in uh, the patients between 10 and 40 years of age most commonly they are present in the male and they are most commonly present in the posterior body and ascending ramus of the mandible. If the lesion is small, then it will be asymptomatic and it will be diagnosed on the basis of routine radiographic examination. If they are larger in size, they will cause pain, swelling and drainage. So here is the uh, picture which can, you know, easily states the, uh, the percentage of uh, uh, its uh, uh, occurrence of the odontogenic keratocyst. We can see the posterior body and ramus area. It comprises the 49% of its occurrence. So it will be more common in this area. Okay, so if you talk about the clinical features, the anterior posterior di direction within the medullary cavity of the bone without causing obvious bone expansion. One characteristic feature of the Odontogenic keratocyst is that it moves or it expands in anterior posterior direction rather than expanding the, co the cortical plates, the buccal and lingual cortical plates. Okay, it is a characteristic feature of the odontogenic keratocyst. The dentigerous and radicular cysts of uh, comparable size are usually associated with bony expansion. Okay, the dentigerous and radicular cyst will cause the expansion, the buccal plate expansion and lingual plate expansion, whereas that of the odontogenic keratocyst will uh, will move in anterior posterior direction rather than expanding the buccal and lingual plates. Uh, multiple odontogenic keratocyst will be present in nevoid basal cell carcinoma, or also known as the Gorlin syndrome. Now we'll discuss about the radiographic features well-defined radiolucent area with smooth and often corticated margins will be present. If the lesion is large, then it will be multilocular. And it may be, you know, associated with the unerupted tooth and it will comprise the 25 to 40% of the cases and will be confused with the dentigerous cyst because they both will look similar, okay, uh, on the radiograph. It may 
cause resorption of the roots but less common than that of the dentigerous and radicular cyst. Uh, the dentigerous and radicular cyst will cause root resorption but it is less common in the odontogenic keratocysts. Here we have a radiograph, the OPG, uh, section of OPG is shown here. Okay, this is the mandible, this is the condyle and this is the coronoid process, this is ascending ramus, this is posterior uh, body area. Here we can see multi-locular radiolucencies over this area. Okay, this is a case of odontogenic keratocyst. Here we can see the uh, radiolucent area is present on unerupted crown. So it will be confused with that of the dentigerous cyst. And here we have the uh, coronal section of CT scan, and it shows uh, this tooth present in the maxillary sinus, and the this lesion, the o OKC is present, which is causing haziness of the left maxilla. Here we can see here the radiolucency. It is a case of OKC, but it may be confused with lateral periodontal cyst. Here we can see it is present on the crown of unerupted tooth between the roots present you know in the posterior uh, part of the mandible in the ascending ramus area may be confused with the ameloblastoma or if present bilaterally then with chirubism in young patient and here we can see at the periapical area and here without the you know uh, the missing it is associated with the missing tooth okay so it be it can be confused with differences on the basis of the radiographic examination so uh, how can we diagnose odontogenic keratosis it is basically done on the histopathological features if you talk about the radiographic findings they are highly suggestive but they cannot be diagnostic okay uh, they can simulate dentigerous cyst a radicular cyst a residual cyst a lateral periodontal cyst or globulomaxillary cyst Odontogenic keratocyst of the anterior midline maxillary region mimic nasoparatine duct cysts. So these are different cysts, uh, you know, which can be confused, and we cannot, you know, uh, diagnose the these cysts on the basis of the radiographic examination because they looks like odontogenic keratocysts. So now we'll discuss about the histopathological features. Uh, thin fr a friable wall, which is often difficult to enucleate from the bone in one piece and that is why uh, some of its remnant may be there uh, in at the place and may lead to reoccurrence of the lesion. The cystic lumen uh, contains a clear liquid that is similar to a transudate of a serum or it may be filled with a cheesy material that on microscopic examination consists of keratinaceous debris. Okay, The thin fibrous wall is essentially devoid of any inflammatory infiltrate so inf inflammatory infiltrate will not be present in the uh, thin fibrous wall okay the epithelial lining is a uniform layer of stratified squamous epithelium usually six to eight cells in thickness if you talk about dentigerous cyst uh, that is composed of two to four cells in thickness but here keratocyst is usually six to eight cells in thickness the epithelium and connective tissue interface is usually flat and ratty ridges formation is uh, inconspicuous okay the luminal surface uh, the is flattened perakeratotic epithelial cells uh, you know at the luminal surface there is flattened perakeratotic epithelial cells present which exhibit a wavy or corrugated appearance Okay, the basal epithelial layers composed of palisaded layer of cuboidal or columnar epithelial cells, which are often hyperchromatic. This point is, you know, very uh, characteristic, characteristic uh, a feature of uh, the odontogenic uh, keratocyst because uh, when there will be inflammation, there will be no palisaded layer, and it will lead to difficulty in the diagnosis of um, odontogenic keratocyst if the inflammation is present because there will be no palisaded layer there okay and uh, this palisaded layer is a very characteristic feature uh, for odontogenic keratocyst small uh, satellite cells cords or island of odontogenic epithelium may be seen within the fibrous wall these structures have been present in 7 percent to 26 percent of cases in various reported series 
Here uh, we have the, po uh, the point, there if there is inflammation, the typical feature of odontogenic keratosis may be altered. The parakeratinized luminal surface may disappear and the epithelium may proliferate to form ratty ridges with the loss of the characteristic pedicidic basal layer. When these changes involve most of the cyst lining, the diagnosis of odontogenic keratosis cannot be confirmed unless other sections show the typical features described earlier. So we have to take other sections and uh, uh, if this shows that characteristic feature then we can diagnose otherwise it will be difficult to diagnose in the presence of inflammation now we will discuss about the molecular changes and genetics uh, dysregulation or mutation of ptch tumor suppressor gene involved in both nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome and sporadic okc occurs on chromosome 9q uh, 22 3p uh, sorry, 3Q31. Loss of hydrozygosity in loci, which is related to DNA imbalance, revealing deletion of tumor suppressor genes. Cell proliferation markers such as uh, P53, KI67, and PCNA, as well as certain uh, cytokeratins and suppression of uh, apoptosis related markers such as BCL2 and BAGS were also identified. So this is the you know molecular changes and genetics. What is the pathogenesis of OKC? Uh, hedgehog signaling pathway and PTCH mutation explain the pathogenesis of OKC. PTCH and SMO uh, forms a receptor complex in the cell membrane which has a suppressor effect on the growth signal transduction. If PTCH is mutated, this inhibitory effect is lost and proliferative and stimulating effect of SMO dominates the inhibition. SSH sonic hedgehog ligand binding to PTCH also releases this inhibition and facilitates the growth signals. So this is how uh, the uh, we can explain the pathogenesis of OKC. Aspiration, uh, you know, uh, if we aspirate OKC, it will contain characteristic odorless thick creamy, dirty, white, viscoid su su suspension of keratin, uh, you know, resembling pus, okay. Uh, total protein is less than 4 gram per 100 ml and it is, you know, if you talk about the dentigerous cyst, then the total protein is more than 4 gram per 100 ml. And here in odontogenic keratocyst, the total protein is less than 4 gram per 100 ml. Other contents will be cholesterol crystals, hyaluronic acid, keratin, Russian bodies, heparin, and uh, chondroitin sulfate. Okay, and now we'll discuss about the differential diagnosis. If we talk about histologically, there it can be uh, maxoma, amyloblastoma, central giant cell granuloma, and odontogenic cyst. And radiographically, dentigerous cyst, residual cyst, radicular cyst, lateral periodontal cyst, primordial cyst, globulomaxillary cyst, unicystic amyloblastoma, AV malformation fibrosis lesion at initial stages. Now we will discuss about the treatment and prognosis. They are treated similarly to other odontogenic cysts that is by enucleation and curettage. Complete removal is uh, in one piece is often you know difficult because of the thin friable nature of the cyst wall. In, const in contrast to the other the odontogenic cysts, odontogenic keratosis often uh, tend to reoccur after treatment. So there are more chances for odontogenic uh, keratosis to reoccur as compared to other cysts. Uh, the reported frequency of recurrence in various studies ranges from 5% to 62%. Uh, if we talk about the recurrence, the you know mandibular odontogenic keratosis, particularly those in the posterior body and ascending ramus, uh, you know. If we talk about the odontogenic keratosis that is present in the posterior body and ascending ramus of the mandible, it will have a more chance of recurrence. Okay, so remember, there will be more recurrence in the odontogenic keratosis that is present in the mandible and in the posterior area. Okay, one thing is very necessary that is the long-term clinical and radiographic follow-up. This is necessary thing. So that is how we can you know avoid the uh, the you know recurrence or we can at least uh, try to avoid the recurrence of the odontogenic keratosis. Uh, these are the causes and factors responsible for recurrence of OKC. 
incomplete removal of the cystic lining because the cystic lining is very fragile and thin okay thin and fri uh, friable nature of the epithelial lining higher level of cell proliferative activity in epithelium budding in the basal layer of epithelium bony perforation adherence to the adjacent soft tissues uh, sub uh, sorry supra epithelial and sub epithelial split of the epithelial lining parakeratinization of the surface layer Remnants of the dental lamina, uh, lamina epithelium not associated with original OKC and development of new OKC in the adjacent area. Growth of new OKC from uh, uh, satellite cyst, daughter cyst, remnant cell rests. So these are the basic you know, reasons of the uh, recurrence of OKC. You should memorize this, this list. Okay, uh, so if we summarize the treatment and prognosis, so these are uh, the this will be the list for the treatment: conservative like enucleation, enucleation with curettage, enucleation with peripheral ostectomy, enucleation with cornoise solution with or without peripheral ostectomy, enucleation and cryotherapy. Cryotherapy is done uh, by means of the liquid nitrogen, and for carnoise solution there it has different composition carnoise solution and different penetrating power okay marsupialization that is decompression marsupialization with the cystectomy that is Veldron's method and in last resection so now uh, we will discuss why resection is more you know beneficial than that of the enucleation although enucleation helps to provide complete specimen for histopathological examination but it shows recurrence rates as high as 30 to 60 percent as compared to that of the resection which is zero percent okay that is why resection is uh, the preferred uh, you know treatment of choice now we'll discuss about the advanced and future treatment modalities the SHH pathway can be blocked at different levels and SHH inhibitors could serve as uh, attractive uh, anti-tumor agents According to some studies, cyclopamine, a plant-based steroidal alkaloid, blocks activation of SHH pathway caused by oncogenic mutation. And this is how we can treat or prevent the odontogenic keratosis from occurring. So these are the references of this uh, lecture. So that's it. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed my lecture. If you enjoy my lecture, please subscribe to my channel. And I will try my level best to make more videos on oral pathology to make it you know easier for you people uh, till my next lecture take care bye bye